Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Lamed contains one Mishnah and two disparate. So here's the first, the beginning of the DAF until the Mishnah is discussing halachas of using the restroom and cleaning oneself properly afterwards, whether one needs to wash hands, whether one needs to do Natil Sidaim, and for which type of using the restroom. The Mishnah teaches us halachas of using the mikvah, going to the mikvah before entering the base of Mikdash, who has to go to the mikvah and why, the Gemara will call it Machlokas as to why, and who exactly who, and analyze that alone. So first of all, we had seen in our previous Mishnah that halachas is somebody who uh, uses the restroom for liquid waste before or while he's in the base of Mikdash, needs to do Kiddush Yodayim. Vera Glaim has to wash his hands and his feet from the kir. So the Gemara says, we understand why he, has to watch his, why he has to wash his feet, because drops may have sprayed on his feet, but why does he have to wash his hands? The Gemara says, that this is a proof that somebody needs to rub his legs to clean off the drops after using the restroom. And that is because we're afraid that people will see drops of liquid waste on his legs. They will assume that there's something wrong with him that caused the drops to spray, and that he therefore must have an injury to his male organ, and that is what's causing the drops to spray, and if so, how is it that he has his children, and they will come to say that his children are not really his, they must have been born from somebody else, that would be, and that they are mamzerim, that would be moitzi laz, that would be a terrible slander on his family, we don't want that to happen, therefore he has to clean the drops off of off his legs. That being the case, we understand why his hands got dirty, and why he needs to do kiddush yadayim, to clean his hands, not only his legs. And we're now moves on to the discussion of removing solid waste before uh, Dvaram Shevik Dusha, the Gemara says that Rav Papa says that somebody who has solid waste, a drop of it left in the place in which it exits the body, is not allowed to say Shema. So Gemara says, what are you talking about over here? If it's a large enough amount that it's visible, that it's, obviously he's dressed, but it would theoretically be visible, so then of course he has waste on his body, that's clear. The Allah says that anyone who's in the presence of solid waste is not allowed to daven. Unless, the Gemara says, maybe we're talking about where it's such a tiny amount that it's not, you can't be aware of it, you're not, it's not visible. So Gemara says, well then how can you say that it's Aser? We have a rule in Nitna Teir Lama Al-Chayesh that we only restrict people to things which are possible. One is, cannot be expected to clean himself to the point where such uh, tiny drops that are invisible don't exist at all. The Gemara answers, we're talking about an in-between situation. We're referring to where when the person stands, then the waste which is in the place where it exits the body is covered. It's hidden by the sides of the body, and therefore it's considered to be like it's not there. However, when he sits, then it's revealed and exposed and it is visible. So it is a significant amount. He should have been able to remove it. He didn't, but it doesn't fit in the classic halacha of not being in the presence of waste because it is covered. And therefore, Rav Papa is telling me that it's usher to say Shema in that situation. So now the Gemara says that we have a different machlokis between Rav Chizda and Rav Huna. And both of them go against Rav Papa. There, a machlokis is if somebody puts his hand into a bathroom without touching anything, or if somebody has some solid waste on his skin. So, is it Usher to say Kriyishma in that situation or not. Rav Huna says it is Mutter, Rav Chizda says it is Usher. What's their Machlokas? They are arguing about does the entire body have to be in a state that's Kasher for Shema? Do we say Kalatzmoise All the body has to be in a state that's appropriate for saying Shema in order to say Shema. According to Rav Huna, no, it's Mutter, only the mouth and the air canal has to be in that state, but if your hand is in a bathroom or if you have something on your skin in a different place, that's okay. Rav Chizda says, no, it's mostly Tamarana, everything has to be in the state of readiness for Shema. Now, Rav Huna definitely doesn't fit with Rav. Rashi explains that even Rav Chizda holds that it's usher to say Shema in that situation because of Kalat's mostly Tamarana, does not hold that it's a classic situation of being in the presence of solid waste. It is not considered to be a, a problem of smell. So that doesn't fit with Rav Papa, who does seem to hold that there is a problem of smell here. That's Rashi's explanation, as explained by the Ritva. Sigmar so says that Rav Papa is talking about specifically when it's in the place where it leaves the body. There it's particularly foul, it's fresher, it's warmer, it exudes a fouler odor, and therefore it's problematic. Some other place on the body, somewhere else on the skin, he could agree with Rav Chizda that it's not necessarily a problem of smell. Okay, the Gemara now quotes a Bryce that gives us the halachos of uh, returning to a Suda after using the restroom. The Bryce says that somebody who went to pass water during a meal has to wash the one hand which was involved. 
He doesn't have to wash anything else. If, however, he went outside and he had a long conversation with a friend, even though he didn't touch anything, when he comes in, he should wash both hands, because people will assume he went to pass solid waste because he was gone for so long, and therefore he should wash both hands. Now, there's a discussion where he should wash it. The Bryce says he should not wash it outside and then come in without anybody seeing him wash. He should wash it in the room at the table. He should wash his hands and pass around the washing cup to anybody else and say, does anybody else need water? All this to publicize the fact that he's washing, so people should not suspect him of coming sitting down by a suda with filthy hands. Chizda comments here, and he says, this is only if he's coming back to the suda just to drink. If he's coming back to eat, everybody will know that he washes his hands. Nobody will suspect him of being so vile as to not wash his hands, but drinking... Rashi says he used to sit and drink for a long time after the Suda. Drinking is, uh, he may be a little bit lenient with himself, and therefore he should show that he, no, he wasn't lenient, he did go ahead and wash his hands. Masir Renachman Bar Yitzchak says, I am so uh, finicky that even to drink, nobody would ever suspect me of not washing my hands, and um, therefore it should be clear. Okay, that brings us to our next Mishnah. The Mishnah teaches us three halachos about entering the base of Migdash and cleaning ourselves with Tvila and Kiddush Yitayim and Reglaim. So the first halacha is not Dafgan Yom Kippur. It says nobody's allowed to come into the base of Migdash, into the Azara. The Mishnah says even that specifically to do Avoida, Rashi says Lav Dafka to do Avoida, nobody's allowed to enter the Azara under any circumstances. Even if he's a Tahar person, the Mishnah says, until he goes to the Mikvah. Even a Tahar person has to go to the Mikvah before coming into the Azara. The Gemara will explain why. The Mishnah says, next halacha back to Yom Kippur, that there were five times that the Kohen Gadol went to the Mikvah on Yom Kippur, and ten times that he washed his hands and feet from the Kiyar. All of them had to be done by Mokam Kadosh, as the Pasuk says, in a place of Kedusha, as part of the Yom Kippur Avoda, and that is in a special Mikvah in a base HaParva, on the roof of the Parva chamber. The one exception is this one that we mentioned at the beginning of the Mishnah, that everybody has to do. Uh, and therefore, it's not part of the Yom Kippur service. When, when first entering the Azar in the morning, everybody has to go to the Mikvah, and therefore the Kohen Gardel did not have to do that tefillah in the special place for Yom Kippur tefillah. So he did it on top of Sharamayim, on top of the water gate, just like um, everyone uh, else. It was not B'mokim Kadesh, it was outside of the Azar itself. Now, the Mishnah describes how the tefillah happened. The Mishnah says that they hung up a sheet of linen in order to provide privacy so that he could change and go to the Mikvah without being seen. Okay, the Gemara begins, and its discussion is, what is the reason that everybody needs to use the mikvah before coming into the Beis HaMikdash? And then we'll get into a, a Machlokas Tanayim based on three different prices as to who exactly has to use the mikvah, go to the mikvah before coming into the Beis HaMikdash. First of all, what's the reason? So the Gemara says, Machlokas Ben Zoma and Rabbi Yehuda. Ben Zoma says, this is Tvila Dairaisa. And it's learned out of the fact that the Kohen Gadol has to do Tvila every time he goes from the Kodesh Kadashim to the regular Kodesh, or vice versa. When he moves from the Kodesh Kodashim to the Kodesh, or from the Kodesh to the Kodesh Kodashim, he has to go to the Mikvah, and he has to do Kodesh Yedayim Vereglayim. So why does he have to go to the Mikvah then? He's transferring from a Makam Kodesh to another Makam Kodesh. There isn't such a difference in those two places, and yet still, he has to do Tefillah. They both even have the same Halacha, somebody who enters those places, Betumah, whether it's the Kodesh or the Kodesh Kodashim, the Azara or the Kodesh HaKadoshim, still has to do, if he's Tameh, he will get Kares for that. So the Salachas are the same. It's not such a change in status of the two locations. Yet he has to go to the Mikvah, going from one to the other. So therefore, somebody who's going into the base of Mikdash, he's going from Chol to Kodesh, and he's going from a place where there's no violation of Kares if he's Tameh, to a place where there is a violation of Kares if he's Tameh. So it's a big change in status from the place that he's in to the place in which he's coming. He definitely has to go to the Mikvah. That is Ben Zoma, and he's therefore saying, we're learning from the Kohen Gadol, that is a mitzvah de Raisa for somebody to do tefillah, even if he's Tahar, it's a mitzvah de Raisa for him to do tefillah when he comes into the base of Mikdash. Rav Yudah disagrees. Rav Yudah says there's no mitzvah de Raisa, he's Tahar, there's no reason de Raisa, he should have to go to the mikvah. This is a dira banon, and it's to remind him to think carefully as to whether he's actually Tame or not. By going to the mikvah, by making him go to the mikvah, it'll make him search his memory. Does he really have Tuma? with him or not, and that is what this machok is about. So Gemara now says, what's the practical difference between the two? So Gemara tries a few options here. Gemara's first option is that according to Ben Zayma, he violated an Isra Daraisa, he violated a Mitzvah Sasei Daraisa, and therefore his Avodah will be puzzled if he didn't go to the Mikvah. According to Yehuda, will not. Gemara says this is incorrect. Ben Zayma will agree that the Avodah is not puzzled if he didn't go to the Mikvah. Because the entire halacha that you need to go to the mikvah when you first enter the base of mikdash is learned out of the Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippur, and the Kohen Gadol's avodah itself is kosher if he did not go to the mikvah. And the Gemara quotes a price to that extent. 
Where it says that a koya in a gadol that did not go to the mikvah or did not do kiddush yadayim v'ragayim didn't wash his hands between the two types of avoda between changing the clothing his avoda is still kosher. So therefore, it cannot be that Ben Zama would say that. Now, just a conclusion of the Brisa there. The Brisa says that a regular person or a, a regular Kohen or a Kohen Gadol who didn't wash his hands um, before the first Avodah, then his Avodah is puzzled. That is a psal. But this going to the Mikvah, that's not a psal. Okay, so therefore, the Gemara is still looking for what's the practical difference between Ben Zama and Rebu. The Gemara says the practical difference, therefore, is did he violate a mitzvah to say? According to Ben Zemim, if he didn't go to the mikvah, he violated a mitzvah to say. According to Behuda, he did not violate a mitzvah to say. Okay, now the Gemara wants to ask some contradictions here in Behuda's opinion. We have two more brises um, discussing uh, mitzora and somebody else going to the mikvah. So the First b'risa, uh, the Gemara will ask as a contradiction to us, and then the Gemara will say it's not a contradiction, and the Gemara will say that the second b'risa is really contradicting the third b'risa. Uh, we got to talk about Rabbi Huda's opinion, we have to talk about the Rabbanon's opinion. So what we've seen so far is that Rabbi Huda holds that everybody needs to go to the mikvah before entering the base of Mikdash. We said that Rabbi Huda's uh, opinion is that it's the Rabbanon. So Gemara says this is contradicted by Rabbi Huda in a b'risa. This is our first b'risa. The b'risa says that a the Tanakhama says a mitzayra, has to go to the mikvah before he approaches the base of Mikdash to get the blood put on his uh, toe and ear. He has to stand outside Char Nikonar, and he sticks in just a toe and just an earlobe. But he does have to go to the mikvah before he does that. That's the uh, Rabbanon. And Rabbi Huda says, no, he doesn't have to go to the mikvah. So you see Rabbi Huda says, even a Mitzar does not have to go to the mikvah. Um... So certainly, he uh, he would not say that everybody needs to use the mikvah. So the Gemara says, no, 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 no. The Bryce over there concludes, and it says exactly why. Because the Mitzrayah just went to the mikvah yesterday. He goes to the base of Mikdash to do the blood service on the eighth day of his uh, Tahara. And he, obvi- and he had to go to the mikvah on the seventh day. So he just went. So he doesn't need to go again. That, 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 that attending the mikvah just the night before, that takes care of the requirement to go to the, the mikvah. So Gemara says, well, that is a very obvious answer then. What was the original person talking about? Well, wh- why did he ask the question from this b'risa? So Gemara says, he was asking this b'risa on a different b'risa. A different b'risa, it also has a discussion between Rabbi Yudin and the Chachamim. And this b'risa reads as follows. Um, the Chachamim say that the there's a room called the Lishkas HaMetzirayim, where the Mitzrayim would go to the mikvah. And Rabbi Yudin says, not only Mitzrayim went to the mikvah, but everybody went to the mikvah there. So you see here clearly, Rabbi Yudah says that a Mitzrayim does have to go to the Mikvah before he enters the base of Mikdash. In our previous Brisa, they said that he does not have to. So a contradiction in Rabbi Yehuda. The Gemara says three answers. The Gemara first wants to, and the, the first one will require a few options. So the Gemara first wants to say, okay, so sometimes Mitzrayim has to go to the Mikvah, sometimes he does not. When? He says he has to go if he didn't go to the Mikvah the night before. The Gemara says he didn't go to the Mikvah the night before, then he's not ready to come to the base of Mikdash at all. He has to go to the Mikvah today and he has to wait till the sun comes down. Right, he 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 needs tahara. We know he needs tahara. So says no. So it's talking about where he went to the mikvah, but he didn't have mental focus on his tahara. He was mesiach das. Didn't have mental focus. Moses didn't have mental focus. So for all we know, he's tummy mace. He has to go get sprinkled with uh, paraduma water on the third and the seventh day of the next week. Moses says no. So it's not talking about where he didn't lose focus. He did lose focus. Um, the question is, what type of tefillah did he do? In one situation, he did tefillah with the understanding that he's using this tefillah to go into the base of Mikdash. And in the situation where he does have to, where he where he has to go to the Mikvah again, is where the tefillah that he did, he didn't have in mind that he's using this tefillah to prepare him to go into the base of Mikdash. You have to have that in mind when you do a tefillah. So it was tefillah the night before, he has to know that this is also a preparatory tefillah for entering the base of Mikdash. Okay, that's the Gemara's first answer. The Gemara is now a second answer, and the contradiction in Rabbi Huda is that we changed the wording exactly. Rabbi Huda didn't say... Not only Mitzray, not only them, but everybody has to go. Rabbi Huda said everybody has to go, but he didn't say not only them, and therefore he does not hold that Mitzray has to go. Rabbi Huda disagrees. He says no, Mitzray doesn't have to go to the mikvah because he just went to the mikvah the night before. Rabbi Huda is saying everybody who enters the base of mikdash has to go to the mikvah. The Gemara's third answer now is brought by Ravina. And that Ravina was just saying, according to the Rabbanan's opinion, Rabbi Huda holds that a Mitzrayah doesn't have to go to the mikvah. Rabbi Huda said to the Rabbanan, you're telling me a Mitzrayah has to go to the mikvah. 
So uh, you should for sure at least agree that everybody needs to go to the mikvah. I hold even a Masara doesn't have to go, but you should at least agree to me that everybody has to go to the mikvah, even a non Masara. So says, now what is the explanation of the Rabbanon's opinion? And the Gemara has a possibility to say that the Rabbanon really hold like Benzema. And Benzema said that everybody needs to go to the mikvah, including a Masara. So when the Chachamim said a Masara needs to go to the mikvah, they also meant everybody has to go. Um... And the only reason that the Brisa quotes in Machlokis is in the in the case of Mitzrayim is to show that's where the Rabbanan and Rabbi argue. The Rabbanan and Rabbi Huda argue in the case of a Mitzrayim, but really, the Chachamim agree that everybody has to go to the mikvah. So, uh, as they say in the first Brisa, but not in the second Brisa. So Gemara says no, that's not that's not actually the situation over here. Not actually the Pshat. The Pshat is that in Mitzrayim they particularly demand that he needs to go to the mikvah, even though he went to the mikvah just the night before, and that's because the Mitzrayim has been tame for a very long time, and therefore he hasn't been concerned with the halachas of tome. He hasn't paid attention to it. So even though he just went to the mikvah the night before, since he's so busy dealing with tuma, we are concerned that he became tame again, and that's why we make him go to the mikvah in the morning just before he enters the base hamikdash. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.